We were wrong about black hole. We envision it as a gigantic, super dim locale in space that pulls everything toward it. And once something falls inside, it is dragged to the central endpoint called the singularity, where everything gets squished, right? But what if we told you that's not precisely how black holes work? So what's a singularity, anyway? And what truly is on the other side of the pitch black shade? Get prepared to find a mind-bending world of black holes, where reality is way stranger than any fiction. Black holes are complicated space wonders. Everything around them is complicated. When a large star, approximately 10 to 20 times more massive than the sun, depletes all of its fuel, the balance between gravity and pressure breaks down, and the star collapses in on itself, going supernova. The issue with our current understanding is that we use different theories to explain phenomena happening on different scales. There's quantum field theory, which works well to explain the complex behavior of particles, ranging from atoms down to the tiniest subatomic building blocks of matter. Apply this theory to cosmic scales, and it's of no use. For that task, scientists resort to Einstein's general relativity. Choose the correct theory, and calculations produce accurate answers. But black holes are tricky. At first, they're astronomical objects, huge stars. But later, they shrink rapidly to much smaller, sometimes quantum sizes. For example, for the sun to become a black hole, it would need to be compressed to the size of about 1.8 miles, 2.9 kilometers, in radius. Hypothetically, you can turn any object into a black hole. There's a formula that tells us how much something must be crushed to become one. This boundary is known as the Schwarzschild radius. And if you wonder how tiny our planet would need to be to turn into a black hole, imagine the whole Earth as a ball with a radius of 0.35 inches, 0.88 centimeters. But what if an object's radius is zero? Ordinary calculations, both math and physics, become meaningless. And so we call this phenomenon a singularity. But does such a concept really exist in the physical world? Let's try to break it down. Imagine a thought experiment. If you wanted to make the perfect version of a black hole, you'd start with tiny bits of matter floating around in space. They don't push against anything, but just hang there. They're like small specks of dust floating very close to each other, without moving much. But in space, there's gravity, and it starts pulling everything together, reducing the space in between dust particles. Over time, small bits of dust begin to crush tighter and tighter, eventually reaching a point where their combined mass and gravity grow so intense that space around them starts to compress. This creates an event horizon, a kind of boundary that lets things in but doesn't allow anything to get out. This type of black hole is called a Schwarzschild black hole. It has mass, which is just how much stuff went into making it, but it doesn't have any electric charge or spin. Now, think about what happens when you cross the event horizon of such a black hole. For the sake of the experiment, Let's say it's large enough for you to enter with a spaceship. Once in, you freeze and try to get out by firing thrusters to speed back. Physics says that regardless of the direction the ship faces, you'll still be drawn toward the central singularity. Imagine a long, narrow hallway with no way out but through a door at the end. Once you step in, the door shuts behind you, and there's no way to open it again. The hallway contains a moving walkway, much like those travelators at airports, and it's pulling you forward at the speed of light. No matter which way you try to move, either running in the opposite direction or moving sideways, you'll still end up being carried forward. Or, at least, this is how scientists thought black holes acted. However, space-time gets far more complicated when you have a mass that spins. So far, we only know of black holes that possess angular momentum or spin. They form from the collapse of rotating massive stars, and as matter collapses, the rotation is conserved, leading to the formation of a spinning black hole. Quantum mechanics was created to explain the strange world of tiny scales, but instead of giving us answers, it led to more uncertainty, like fluctuations in space-time. These quantum fluctuations play a key role when it comes to event horizons surrounding black holes. Now, we've all heard that nothing can escape a black hole, but this is where things get tricky. Near an event horizon, particles and antiparticles suddenly pop in and out of existence, destroying each other almost instantly. But what if one of these particles manages to escape the strong grasp of a black hole? The late, great Stephen Hawking explained this with his theory of Hawking radiation. 
When a particle and a particle pair forms near the event horizon, one falls into the black hole while the other escapes. By doing so, the free particle takes energy from the black hole. Given enough time, and we're talking incomprehensibly large numbers, 10 to the power of 68 to 10 to the power of 103 years, a black hole would vanish completely, leaving nothing behind. But if there's nothing left behind, where does the infinite singularity go then? In the real universe, infinite values don't exist, or at least we haven't found any yet. When scientists make calculations that lead to infinity, it means there's something wrong with the theory. It's too simplistic for extreme cases. Imagine a guitar string, gently plucked at its resonant frequency. According to the basic model of wave behavior, the vibration of the string would grow exponentially over time. In theory, it would vibrate past the moon, the stars, out to infinity, and then back. But even though this is what the model predicts, it's not what happens in reality. The fact that infinity appears in the model indicates it's oversimplified, and there are certain limits. So, what does this mean for our understanding of black holes? If singularities aren't real, perhaps at the center of every black hole lies something completely different, something beyond what we can fully grasp. Scientists have a few ideas. According to Penrose's hypothesis, singularities are inevitable in general relativity. Anything moving in space and only experiencing gravity should follow a specific path, a so-called geodesic, the shortest and most efficient route, both spatially and temporally. All of space-time is structured this way, and the universe is one massive fabric, shaped by these geodesic lines, some straight and others curved. These paths are endless, like lines drawn on a spherical object. But Penrose proposed that geodesics should converge inside black holes, ending at their centers, meaning that paths of space-time itself terminate, and you get a singularity or an infinity. Stephen Hawking believed this was how the Big Bang started, as a singularity, or geodesics tracing back to a single point. However, a recently published paper by Roy Kerr offers a very different perspective on black holes. The rotation of matter changes everything. Instead of a single event horizon marking the boundary beyond which nothing can escape, spinning black holes have two distinct horizons, an outer horizon and an inner one. These horizons are like invisible walls marking the regions where the gravitational drag becomes too strong for even light to escape. Rotating black holes also have something called ergospheres, swirling zones around a black hole where space-time itself is dragged along by its spin faster than the speed of light. If you were there, no matter how hard you tried to stay stationary, it would be to no avail. In a way, these ergospheres are like whirlpools in space-time affecting the movement of nearby objects. These objects can collide, creating extremely bright light. Since everything moves so quickly there, if an object managed to escape an ergosphere, it would leave with far more energy than it entered with. In theory, this mechanism could provide nearly unlimited energy, though learning how to extract it seems like an impossible task. Then again, there's still the singularity. Although it doesn't have a point-like shape, it has a ring-like structure due to the effect of angular momentum, which flattens it out. Here's a simple way to imagine this. Picture a drop of paint falling onto a piece of paper. If the paper is stationary, the paint forms a single dot. But if you spin the paper quickly as the drop falls, the paint spreads out, creating a ring. And so, if matter falls into a black hole along this confusing path, its route isn't a simple circle that stays in one plane. Instead, it moves all over the place, like a bee buzzing in the air. Over time, the particle's path fills up a three-dimensional space. So, instead of sticking to a flat path, particles around spinning black holes move in all directions, describing a kind of donut shape in space. Particles pulled into a rotating black hole won't just cross the event horizon, heading straight to the central singularity. It's not like dropping a stone into a pond where it sinks straight to the bottom. Instead, it's more like tossing a leaf into a strong wind. The wind's swirling motion carries the leaf in all sorts of directions, sometimes pushing it closer to the ground, other times lifting it upward. Called Kerr black holes, these spinning celestial monsters don't have real singularities, and matter doesn't necessarily end up falling inside their central singularities. Instead, past the event horizon, 
the centrifugal force creates almost normal space-time just around ring singularities, where objects can move in different directions, and they might be able to do so for a very long time. So, what is this ring singularity then? Essentially, it's a gravitational field inside a black hole, the product of a spinning object. But here's a mind-boggling follow-up. A star that collapsed to form this black hole would still be there inside the dark space monster. Chunks and bits of the star follow the paths of geodesics, never ceasing to exist. Even light would still be present there. Can you imagine a place like that? An almost perpetual centrifuge isolated from the outside universe, but one that has its own small world swirling around and illuminated by ethereal light. What do you think about this new perspective on black holes? We hope you enjoyed the video. If you'd like more fascinating discoveries about the mysterious world we live in, stay tuned here. Thanks for watching.